TypeScript 5.8 is about a month away from full release, but I want to show you two awesome features that you can expect. One of them you can consider a bug fix for a long-standing complex TypeScript problem, and the other could apparently be the start of TypeScript in the browser. First up, let's talk about the new erasable syntax only flag, which actually removes a few features from TypeScript. Let me explain. Most of the time when we have our TypeScript code, we use purely type level features that can actually be erased during compilation to become our JavaScript files. However, there's always been a few odd and controversial features that are a little more complex than just removing the TypeScript to run, aka they can't be erased. Enums, namespaces, and class parameter shorthands. These TypeScript features create runtime JavaScript code rather than being purely type level features that can be erased during compilation. This makes running and bundling these a lot more complex. That's where the erasable syntax only flag comes in. It removes these features and will actually cause TypeScript to throw errors in your code base if you have them. So why is this good for you then? Well, first, if you have the flag, you're going to have the confidence that Node will be able to execute your TypeScript files without additional configuration. If you missed this awesome Node update, there was actually a flag before, experimental strip types, which as the name suggests, allowed Node to run TypeScript files simply by erasing the TypeScript bit. But now this is actually the default behavior in Node 23.6. You can actually run TypeScript files without TS Node or TSX now. Looking longer term as well, Matt thinks this takes us one step closer to TypeScript support in the browser. Imagine that. The other new feature or bug fix I suppose that I'm excited about is titled Checked Return Statements for Conditional and Indexed Access Types. Now, if you understood that, congratulations, you're a TypeScript pro. Otherwise, keep watching, I'll explain. Let's start with an example of a conditional return. So say we have two types, we have a person and a website, and they both have a name, but then person has an address and website has a URL or a web address. Say we wanted to create a function that based on one of these objects being passed in, just returns us an address. So in the type person, we want the address to be returned and type website, we want it to return the URL here. Well, we could write a function like this. It can only take in an object of person or website using TypeScript, and it's going to return a string or URL. And then we narrow it down inside of here. So when we return object or URL, when we know it's a website, the return type here, you can see, says it's URL. And then otherwise, it's going to be the address. So the return type here says string. Well, problems actually going to occur if we go ahead and use this. So you can see when we create the object of person and website, and then we go ahead and use our get address function, the person address here is still of type string or URL even though we know at this point it can only be a string. And the same thing goes for the website URL as well. You can see that that is a string or URL, even though again, we know at this point it could only be a URL. So let's try and fix this. Well, you might reach for a conditional return type, which is what I've done in this new function. So we have get address like we had before, and then we have the object of T that's being passed in, which again can be a person or a website. But for the return type, instead of string or URL, we're going to use a conditional value. So we say T extends person here. So if it's a person, we want the value to be string. And then if T extends website, so if the object passed in is a website, we want it to be a URL. And then we also have the never case here, which it can't hit. Now in our function, if is website is true, it should return a URL, as you can see, and then address it's going to be a string. Now you can see when we use this down here, it's actually getting the correct value out. Now person address is only a string and website URL is only a URL. So it is kind of working, except we're seeing an error here on the return. If I hover over this, you'll see that the error is that type URL is not assignable to the type and then T extends person and then it's all of the return type that we've put there. So what's actually happening is TypeScript isn't actually checking this return type for the conditional. It's not checking it or resolving it to the value that we know it should be, which is either going to be a string or a URL based on our condition. Lucky for us though, if we go ahead and upgrade this to TypeScript 5.8, this should be fixed. There we go, using the nightly build of TypeScript, which is 5.8 at the moment, you can see that the errors have gone away there and our return values down here are now completely correct. Now it is worth noting, even in TypeScript 5.8, you do still need this never option here. You might think you could simplify this TypeScript down to just saying if it isn't a person, well, we know it's obviously going to be a website, so the type is going to be URL. So we could simplify it to something like this. You can see we're going to get errors again, and it's gonna be the same error that we had before of URL isn't assignable to our return type. This is because narrowing a conditional return type requires the false most branch of the conditional to be never. So that's why you always have to explicitly add it in like we had before. Some Something else to note is you could actually fix this issue on versions before 5.8 by using overloads. So here we went back to our function that just says the return type is string or URL, but we're using overloads up here to say if it's a person, the return type will be a string, and if it's a website, it will be a URL, and you see down here we get the same effect. But it's nice to know that it is now checking that return type in TypeScript 5.8. 
the second part of the bug or feature mentioned indexed access types. Let me run you through the example really quickly because it's essentially the same issue. It's not checking the return type here for the index access type. So say we have an interface of config that has prod or dev. Prod is going to be a string and then dev is going to be a Boolean. Say we have a function to go ahead and create our config based on what we pass in. So this is going to be T extends key of config. So the value passed in can either be prod or dev. And then the return type should be based on what we pass in. So if we pass in prod, it should be string. And if we pass in dev, it should be Boolean. And then we can go ahead and just create our config inside of here like this. So if it is prod, it goes ahead and returns our URL. Otherwise it returns true. Now you can see that this is kind of working in the TypeScript here. We can see prod URL down here does have the value of string and dev mode does have the value of Boolean because we are going ahead and using an index access type. The problem is though, we're still seeing a TypeScript error. And if I hover over return, you can see it says that this type is not assignable to that indexed access type. So it's doing a similar thing to what we saw with the conditional return, where it's not actually checking the indexed access type and getting its actual value out. But when I upgrade to TypeScript 5.8, you can see that the error goes away for us as it is now correctly checking this indexed access type. It is worth mentioning as well that you could have fixed this issue using overloads with the same method that we did for the conditional return. There we go, that's why I can't wait for TypeScript 5.8, which hopefully comes out in about a month, but you can already use it if you use the nightly TypeScript build. Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for one day having TypeScript in the browser, and while you're down there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.